Welcome to Book Root Readings, your channel for classic, nature, and living children's books. Click the subscribe button to be notified of new readings. Enjoy the story! The Gift of the Tree by Alvin Tresselt, illustrated by Henry Sorensen. For Lillian Moore with Thanks, A.T. For Lise Winther, H.S. It stood tall in the forest. For a hundred years or more, the oak tree had grown and spread its shade. Birds nested in its shelter. Squirrels made their homes in ragged bundles of sticks and leaves held high in the branches. And in the fall, they garnered their winter food from the rich rain of acorns that fell from the tree. Tucked under its gnarled roots, small creatures found safety from the fox and owl. Slowly, Slowly over the years, the forest soil increased as the brown, leathery leaves, shaken down by the autumn winds, moldered under the snow. But even as the tree grew, life gnawed at its heart. Carpenter ants tunneled through the strength of the oak. Termites ate out passageways in wondrous patterns. A broken limb let the dusty spores of fungus enter the heartwood of the tree, and the rot spread inside the healthy bark. Year by year, the tree grew weaker as its enemies worked. Each spring, fewer and fewer leaves unfolded, and its great reaching branches turned gray with death. Woodpeckers peppered the limbs with holes looking for the tasty grubs and beetles that had tunneled the wood. And here and there, they dug bigger holes to hold their babies. In winter storms, one by one, the great branches broke and crashed to the floor of the forest until there remained only the proud trunk holding its broken arms up to the sky. Now it was autumn, and the days were long and lazy, yellow-gray and misty mornings, mid-days filled with false summer warmth, and nights pierced with frost. Then came a day of hurricane wind and slashing rain, and as the fierce wind shrieked through the forest, the tree trunk split and crashed to the ground. There it lay shattered, with only a jagged stump to mark where it had stood for so long. The cruel days of winter followed. A family of deer mice settled into a hole that had once held an arching branch. A rabbit found protection from the biting wind in the rotted center of the trunk, and the ants and termites, the dormant grubs, and silent fungus waited out the winter weather under the bark and deep in the wood. In the spring, the young sun warmed the forest floor, and acorns sprouted to replace the fallen giant. Now new life took over the dead tree. Old woodpecker holes made snug homes for chickmunks. The hollow center of the trunk sheltered a family of raccoons, while beneath the bark spread the wood-eating fungus, ghost white and sulfur yellow. And deep inside, the carpenter ants and the termites continued their digging and eating. On the trunk, where the tree lay half buried in the damp and musty leaf loam, the mosses stitched a green carpet, softer than the softest wool. Fragile ferns nestled in its shadow. Mushrooms popped out of the decaying mold, 
and clumps of creamy white Indian pipes clustered together, drawing nourishment from the rich loam. The years passed, and the hardwood grew soft and punky. It crawled with a hundred thousand grubs and beetles, centipedes with their scrambling, scurrying legs, and snails and slugs all fed on the rotting wood. The earthworms made their way through the feast, helping to turn the tree once more into earth. Pale shelf fungus clung to the sides like clusters of giant clamshells, eating away and growing as the tree decayed. A skunk came waddling by with her string of babies. Sniffing at the wood, she ripped into its softness with her claws to uncover the scrambling life inside, and eagerly the family feasted. Secretive forest birds scratched and picked for grubs and worms, pulling the tree apart bit by bit, while the melting winter snows and soft spring rains hastened the rotting of the wood. And in this way, as new trees grew in strength from acorns that had fallen long years ago, the great oak returned to the earth. On the ground, there remained only a brown ghost of richer loam where the proud tree had come to rest. <laughs>